Hey, listen to Commander Cookout Podcast, episode 275. I'm Brown, I'm here with Ryan, and we're going to talk about playing magic in the Queen's basement. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan, we're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? We are here. What is going down? Whole bunch is going down. We're going to start off our not set review set review by talking about some legendary Creech from Innistrad Crimson Wedding. You almost forgot the name of the set and then you said the wrong word. (laughs) Well. Way to kick things off. Now that everybody knows that we are fully prepared podcasting professional professionals, we also have some, some people to thank. Uh, An interesting story to tell based on the intro, but before we can get to any of those things, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com. They're your source for all your gaming needs. They're very much so. Yes, that was weird, but I was like, what are they here for? Your gaming needs, all of them. You can use CCO Fusion 5 promo code at checkout to get 5% off your whole dang ass order. 5% 5% off of stuff you're going to be buying anyway? Yes, all the Crimson Vow singles I would recommend uh, this time. Yes, uh-huh. because there's probably not a whole ton of value in sealed product. Maybe those Dracula cards? I don't know. <sighs> Are those Godzilla cards still holding mad value? Oh, Ghidorah's like mad crazy expensive. Well, well like 200 bucks maybe. The fo- Well, the foil one. Well, maybe there's some stuff there. Dracula's know. pretty cool. He's got some... He's got some um, He's got some pop he's, pop culture, no, not nerd culture oomph to him. He's got some heft. Yeah, and and that's that's one of the I guess that's one of the special showcase treatment type things you can get or reskins. What do they call those? I guess this is the review. We'll call them what we want to call. Them. I think they're reskins. That's what I'd call them. That's why I call the Godzilla skin cards. Dracula reskin cards. Yeah, they're they're vanity skins. Do you think that Watsy just like popped it out of the bag because Big Papa Hasbro has already paid for the rights for Dracula, so they just figured, well, sh- shit. Uh, let, maybe people will buy it if there's Dracula. I think that, and that's why they have it in this set, not the other one. Well, this is the this is the vampire one, not well, the werewolf one. Well, they could have had a werewolf thing in they the other. Could one. They could have there. They could have, and also, the, <laughs> if there was a Kate Beckinsale card, oh, people would have been very excited oh, about that. Man, people would have loved that. Yeah, this would have been the perfect opportunity for Underworld Secret Lair. You're welcome, Watsy. Yeah, they blew it though. They did. Mm. They blew their load on Stranger Things. Yeah. And, and you know what? Stranger Things, a little bit more topical, a little bit uh, more in the, well, it's just newer. I, it's just new. No, there is a new Underworld movie coming mm-hmm. out, ain't there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did miss that. They did. They missed I it. would have liked that more. Me too. Certainly Kate Beckinsale from Underworld 1, hey? Yeah. Not yeah. necessarily my favorite Underworld. But I, yeah, I went there. But... Definitely my favorite one that she was in. I like the one where she spins <laughs> in a circle. That doesn't make any fucking sense. I don't know if she spins in a circle and shoots a hole in the floor so that she can then fall through it. And That's number one, isn't it? Then I like the part where she's fighting that great big werewolf and she throws it into a helicopter helicopter spin piece. Yes. And turns it into I don't remember quivering that bloody sushi. It was pretty awesome. Quivering bloody sushi. Yeah, it's like the Lord of the Werewolves and she's just like, ah, eh, fuck you, buddy, and throws him into yeah, the Yeah, fuck you. Yeah, I don't know which one that's <laughs> that's know. from. I've watched those movies in a long time. But oh, man. The, the, the vampire and that guy, what's his name? Uh, Victor? Victor. Where she cuts his face and it goes... Yeah. And people, people who aren't watching on YouTube, which... You fucking should be. Yeah, thanks to the new YouTube subs. Yeah. People who aren't watching on YouTube, though, where I did the hand thing, and, and Joe Joe Mama probably had the picture. I hope so. Uh, well, if he didn't, that's okay. Just kidding, Joe. No, it's... You, Joe? <laughs> yeah. you? I made the sound, and people people who've seen the movie know exactly the part that I was talking about. Right? Yeah. 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 Is that in number two? Uh, I think that's in number two, because that's the one with Michael, the blue guy. The blue guy. He's blue, right? No, he's like he's like Ooh, he's, black with black eyes. He's blue. If yeah, you were to he, see him in the light, he would be blue. I think so. They For probably sure. they re they recolor the movie. What's that called when you recolor something? Uh, Recoloring, filter, color grading. They color graded uh, him yeah. down to fucking black charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, g- cool movies. Um, missed opportunity. We got Dracula though. It is iconic in terms of classic. Go- I think neo gothic. Horror. Yeah. And they're cool like cards too. I really like the Mina Harker one. I like the art. I, I I've like only that. ever read half of Dracula though. 
I actually just finished listening to the audiobook. Oh, yeah? It's free with if you have an Audible account. I don't want to give any kind of hype for them, but for Amazon or whatever, but it is free if you have an account there. And it's a great listen. It's got like Tim Curry and a couple of other famous people doing it. It's it's really Man, well done. I and, might I might have to hit that up. Yeah, and Tim Curry, isn't he the guy from Home Alone Two? Uh, and yeah, uh-huh. yeah, uh-huh. Uh-huh. yeah, and and, and Rocky Clue. Horror Picture Show. Uh-huh. And Clue, and I'm sure other stuff. Yeah, he's like in lots of stuff. Yeah, he's he's very famous. He does a great job. He plays uh, Doctor Seward. Sure. Right. I don't no. know if he, as if he only got halfway through, he might not have got to Doctor Seward. I don't. I don't even remember. I don't remember. I. I don't know. We're not. We're not a Dracula review yeah. podcast. This is. This is. <laughs> we are Commander Cookout podcast, and we are here to talk about Innistrad Midnight Vow Legendary Creech. But before that, we've got a little bit of business. Oh shit! Some biznatch, as we call it. Tell them. First thing. First and most important thing, because it's going to lead to the most fun. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. fun is important in the nation, yes. CCO Nation, that is, for the new listeners and subs. Las Vegas. Yeah. November 19th to 21. Yeah. 21th, I almost said. That's fine. That's how I <laughs> yeah. say it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to be there. Yeah, we are. If you want to play games, just come up to us. Mm-hmm. If you're a content creator and want to do some crossover stuff, always lots of fun. So do we. Yeah, we do. Yeah. But... I won't say preference to, but bonus points if we can drink on your content, because that's <laughs> what we'll be doing anyways. Yeah. We'll just pretend that we're not, <laughs> if, if you don't want that. Oh, yeah. We can definitely do that. Yeah, we're doing it right now. Like that one time that we were, we were on that podcast, and we were drinking the whole time, but we were super secret about it. Yes. Mm-hmm. We weren't actually that secret. I think we actually opened beers on the show. Like You could hear... Kst, yeah. Like, Commander Theory. That was fun. That was a great time. Those guys had a cool setup. Those are good guys. I like them. Yeah. Maybe we'll maybe we'll meet them again. I think they're from California. I think they're they're close. Then it's close. If they're you're close from California, you let us know. You come stay with us or or come come Hang join us. us. Our 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 CCO penthouse is already full. Yeah. We've had some lagging offers that I've had to turn down. Oh man. I know it's sad, but we can always meet up and jam. Hell bump, yeah, we can. Bump uglies, if you will. Doesn't that have? Doesn't that mean we're gonna have sex? We're not gonna have sex with anybody. No, but our commander decks will. Probably. That's kind of how I... Well, I don't, you know what? If you're a weird... Fr- you, you can't physically have sex with any of my commander decks. Okay? <laughs> they got lots of foils in them. You know, no kink shaming in the nation, but... Have sex with your own decks. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Sex mm-hmm. with decks. That's my next podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yikes. No clothes, no clothes allowed. That, s- second order of business. Okay. All right. All right. We're mm-hmm. kicking off a new arc. Not today, yeah, not but, today. but soon. And it's going to be one that involves some submissions from CCO Nation at large. Yeah. Yeah. And we're of course we're going to be asking for deck lists. We're going to be asking for some stories or some short this is why this deck is important type <laughs> comments. Yeah. And if you're part of our Patreon Discord server, that's the best place to do it. Patreon.com slash CCO podcast to jump on that. Help support the show and contribute to our content. But if you're not, commandercookout at gmail.com. You can submit decks and the little things that we're going to ask for in the next couple weeks as we approach the arc. Yeah. Because yeah. in the meantime, we're going to talk about some some cards. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, speaking of cards, I you have a quick story about the intro. I had a story that was TBC'd from last week. Mm. That means to be continued. Yes. So I've been looking for a full art foil Tiamat Ooh. from the Dungeons and Dragons set. I get a collector boosty each week, hoping that I open one. Jesus Christ, man! Where do you get all your money? Well, I, I like to support the thing. I use store credit and stuff. Oh yeah, because you, you trade in all your collector box chaff. Yeah, and like, then you just roll credit month to month. Yeah, like I open the pack up and then I sell everything in the pack to get another pack. Side aside from your aside. That's a great way to actually build magic collection equity. The shit that you'll never fucking play that doesn't matter to you because it's just going to go in your binder and not matter that it's part of your collection. Yep. Turned it into store credit. And then when shit comes out that you actually want. Ba-boom. da da Works real good. It, and it, it surprising amount of value in some of the current sets. Yeah. Just by the by, I'm living proof. So I'm looking for this Tiamat. Can't find one. Can't find one. It's on my we- my wish list with the LGS. Get the email in, boom, here it is. And I'm like, 
Holy mother of God. Instant insta buy. Like in the cart, check out, credit, ching, give me that crap. I'll go pick it up after work. Already sold? Oh no. Oh, oh no, I got it. So I goes to pick it up and I'm talking to Aaron about it. And he's like, man, this is the craziest damn thing. Cause guy brought in the list, brought in his buy list. No, no. Gave me the pile of cards. I entered it into the, the system. Yeah. Put it on the shelf behind me. There's like a shelf behind where he puts all the lists before he puts them into the filing cabinet. Guy behind the dude in line who just dropped off the buy list goes, hey, is that a full art foil? Tia Matt, I kind of want that. And Aaron's like, yeah, just uh, I just put it into the system, but you got to – I put it on the web store, so you got to just buy it online. But, yeah, just do that real quick, and uh, it's yours. Paid so th- cash. So Buddy leaves the store to, to put in the order, and he comes back in and says, hey – uh." It's it's not listed. Like, oh, because well, you bought it. Because I, in the time it took that guy to go like from the line to the hallway to make the order, I'd already scooped that shit. And I walked in and I, I bought it. And you I just got it. Walked in middle <laughs> fingers of blazing. And the dude was like, "So I can't give you money for that card that I can physically see." And he's like, "Nah, nah, I already sold it, man. You're you're a little too slow on that one. I'm sorry." And he's like, "But you just put it down." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah." And he said, "I was gonna tell him that you did it too, but he is pretty mad, so." I didn't. I was like, oh, thanks, Aaron. Oh, man. So if you're listening <laughs> so out there, good. man, I'm I'm sorry I took your full art foil to you, man. So good. So good. I don't remember where I was. You were going to tell about why I said the intro. Oh, yeah. Magic we were, we were basement. playing at a tournament one time in Regina. That's Regina Hall, if you will. It's mm-hmm. a city south of here for anybody who's not familiar with Prairie Canadian Geography, because why would you be? Mm-hmm. A guy that we used to play with, his dad, I used to work with him. Mm-hmm. He goes down to Regina for like a hotel room or whatever. Sure. Like for work every Business couple weeks. Business conference kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, He's got this standing room booked every two weeks to go down to Regina, blah, blah, blah. And one time they like double booked him and he didn't have a room. I don't like that. So he's like, what the hell? I've like, I'm whatever, right? Oh, okay. Well, we've got a different room booked. Ooh. Yeah. So he's like, okay. He just grabs his bag, grabs the key and goes to boot it to the elevator. The concierge is like, hold on, sir. I've got your bag. They called him Sir. They called him Mr. Smith because his last name is Smith, right? Like, you know shit's going down. Yeah. Right? He's like, oh, eighth floor. Cool. Mr. Smith, let me get your bag. No, no, I got it. It's fine. I'm here every two weeks. Like, I know everybody. No, Mr. Smith, I have to get your bag if you're in this room. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of what you pay for. But he didn't have to pay for it because they double booked his room. And right. this room was the only other vacant room in the hotel. This is amazing. Because there was like a like a hockey tournament or something, right? Okay, sure. Which is totally common yeah. for hotels to be completely booked. Oh, yeah. Happens for all hockey the time. tournaments. Mm-hmm. It's the fucking room that the queen stays in when she comes to <laughs> Regina. <laughs> like all two times that it's happened. Yeah. It's like... He, he got pictures. It's like 2,800 square feet. There's a dining set with like 200-year-old dining tables, all wood with high back chairs for 12. It's got like stained glass <laughs> skylights and two scrolly trim crown molding and wall moldings and three bathrooms and six rooms and a full kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was like not for free because he had to pay for his shitty normal hotel room, like 100 and whatever bucks a night. <laughs> <laughs> he got this room. That's value. Yeah, and he brought like the people that he works with in Regina there, and they had a party <laughs> in the Queen's room. So we played we played a magic tournament this this same hotel like a year whatever before shitty COVID. Yeah, and uh, same hotel. Brando was like, yeah, we played magic in the Queen's, Queen's basement. basement, and we were like, yeah, oh, fuck yeah, we did. It's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. good. She's as old as dust. She's older than Edgar Markov. Yeah. 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 Yeah, she's yeah. old. She's so old if she had any planeswalker powers, it'd arbitrarily take them away from her. <laughs> Get home, planeswalker grandma. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that ability anymore. <laughs> Stay home and stop you drinking. You can't call people that online anymore. And stop drinking bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever it is that they told her not to drink anymore. Oh, yeah. No. I've been listening to, speaking of audiobooks from way back in the day. Oh, come on. We still got podcast business. We're not even fucking through that yet. I'm listening to Jaws right now. Oh? And one, there's a lot more sex in book Jaws than there is in movie Jaws. Really? Yeah. And everybody drinks vermouth. I don't even know what vermouth is. That's a thing that they put in like mar- like a classic mar- martini is gin and vermouth. I have some at my house. Would you, you just some. drink it like on the rocks? Well, I sure as fuck wouldn't. But, yeah. but we would if, we, if that I was I mean, I if suppose it if it's all you had. But if you have a liquor cabinet, it's like, I want 
what it like underscore blank in the ro- on the rocks. I don't think anybody says vermouth. I've never heard that except in Jaws the book. What? Uh, looks like we're going to have to have a Jaws reenactment one night. Uh-oh. Yeah, we're going to drink vermouth and then we're going to bite everybody. Yeah. That would be weird, but yeah, you know man. what? If it's for fucking science, yeah, man. some stranger stranger PhD papers out there, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> last piece of business. Last piece of business. Back to biznatch. I right, hit him. The booster pack winner from last week. Oh, yeah. Told us something interesting about Dune. Yes. Dune comment on last week's pre-show. This week's pre-show, you might have missed the commenting already, but if you commented, you get entered to win a booster pack. So go and watch the pre-show and guess next week because it's a ton of fucking fun. Yeah. And you're listening to us anyway, so you might as well watch the pre-show. Yeah. And you'll definitely win. Oh, 100%. Yep. You you specifically will win. 100%. Mm. One time ever, uh, behind the scenes, Oh. one time ever, the same guy that won the previous week won again. Oh. And I was like, you know, fuck that guy. <laughs> Pick somebody, <laughs> somebody else. I didn't want it to look rigged or nothing. But we do have a winner this week. You can tell him. Your boy. Well, our boy. He's, he's a member of CCO Nation. Mother ass Drake Smith. Oh, I love that guy. Yeah, he's totally okay. I played a card signed by him yesterday. You did? You stole my um you stole my Megus of the Wheel. Yeah, and I played him. Yeah, and then you blocked with it. Yep. <laughs> and then <laughs> I and then I died. We died anyways. Yeah, yeah. It was Omnath is a hell of a card. Yeah, Omnath with twenty tokens cause double landfall with the with the bounce land. Oh, the yeah. Karoo land that just bounces itself. Gruel turf. Yeah, man. Guy plays exploration. Gruel turf. Make two guys, make two guys, make two guys, make two guys, make two guys. Yeah, we were in deep shit that game. Yeah, twenty twenty five times that we got attacked with. Yeah. Yikes. Did didn't didn't go very well for you for your heroes. No, it was, it was bad. Yeah. Two we continued, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them next time. We got them the first time. We'll get them again. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah. I couldn't read cards. Okay, Crimson Vow stuff. Yeah. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we got some magic business to go through now. This isn't podcast business. This is magic business. So peep this. New abilities featured on commanders. Blood tokens. <laughs> a blood token is pay one tap. Discard a card, sacrifice this artifact to draw a card. It's terrible. You know what's you know what I think the worst part about it is, and they fucking know. They know they're smart at making magic cards, is discard a card as part of the cost. Yeah. So you can't do a blood token if you have zero cards in hand. Because you have to discard something else. Yeah. It's not part of the effect. So if anybody didn't, I guess, notice that, ye be warned. Yeah, they're they're not very good. They're, they're shitty clue tokens. They're last, shitty clue tokens and they're better food tokens? Last set, we got shitty zombie tokens. Yep. And in this set, we have shitty clue tokens. Okay, well. Which is really great considering they just printed all of those clue manders in that secret lair. It's perfect. Yeah, they should have been They should have been underworld manders. Yeah. I want to be an underworld mander. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I want to be an underwear mander. I want to be a no underwear mander. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to be a commandoer. <laughs> nice, nice, nah. nice. I was gonna call myself a commander, but <laughs> 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 I don't know what would have been funny. Okay, that raises a good point. They 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 are, they're not very good. Yeah, they they suck. You can say they suck. It's okay. Yeah, we we just did a different piece of content where we called a whole bunch of things sucky. We, oh yeah, we recorded. It won't be out for a month, but. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Some people watch the show late. I'm okay. This is what we were talking about in the pre-show. I'm okay with a lot you know, a lot in a row for multiple sets in a row of mm-hmm. commanders being not very powerful. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it because it forces us to be creative and build around things. And where, some of them still end up being fun. Right? Yes. Like, they don't have to be blow you out of the water to be fun to play. Yes. N- no. <laughs> No. Yeah. No, it's like it's like that episode of Mythbusters where they shoot fish in a barrel. They figured out that you don't even have to shoot the fish. You just have to shoot the bullet into the water and it kills all the fish. <laughs> 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 yes. I'm going to play Corvald. Chulane. Those are the two that people give as examples all the time, right? Because sure. this is this was just like shooting a fucking AK into a barrel of water and missing all the fish, but everything still dies. Yeah. Right? When we look at like the new Anya or Dorothy or even the new Edgar. Those are the first three cards on the screen. Yeah, they, it's like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to shoot a toothpick out of like a fucking slingshot and try and kill a fish. Yeah. And sometimes you're going to kill the fish and it's going to be awesome. Yeah. You're going to feel really great as opposed to just shooting a gun at a barrel. Because the reason all the fish die is not only because of the concussive force of the bullet going through the water. It's also because now there's a hole in the barrel and all the water leaks out. 
Yes, but the first one before the second one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm okay with it. It's fine. Okay. Overall impression of the legend. Should we do it now or after? Do we want to preface the show by saying uh, more than what we just did, that a lot of them feel very underpowered? Uh, let's do it at the end. Okay. Let's do it at the end. Yeah. That'll be a good final thought of the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this this will be a good, good, good mental preparation. It must have been practicing. Yes. This is the same th question, but it's a different question. Oh. The same type of question. Okay. Are you going to build any of the new decks? Should we keep an eye out as we talk about the 20 legendaries as for decks that we want to build? Or at least c c new legends that will fit into existing decks that we have. 100% there's those. There's definitely a couple that I'm going to put into decks and give them a shot there. There is one guy who we hinted at yesterday. Oh, we'll, ta we'll, we'll, we'll talk about we'll him later. No spoilers. That I'm, I'm not quite there yet, but I'll bet you... Probably this time next year, I'll have a deck of that uh -huh. creature. You're, you're edging. What? Yeah. Don't Google that. Do not Google that. But that is the most don't Google of the day, I think. That really is, yeah. But So probably he's going to show up in my in my magic bag at, a, at some point. But for right now, nah. Nah. I'm not getting any new decks out of this set, just like, like last time. All right. Well, let's hit some cards. Let's do it. All right, Ryan, should we start at the bottom of the list or the top? Because we have to make sure that wherever we end, we end on a high note. Because I've noticed that we always end with a shitty card. Oh, so, well, we're starting at the top then, 100%. Okay, yeah, because there's definitely a good one near the end. Oh, baby, yeah. there's two, at least two. Okay, so we'll near start... Near the end and or the end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so is... I can't place if Angie... Anya? Or Anya, Maid of Dishonor, is a creature we've seen before is this a person we've seen on a card before anya falconrath aristocrat i think that's the name of it it's the madness one and you discard a card with madness you can draw a card okay yes yeah. all right yes. dope this is the new anya made of dishonor ha 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 it's a wedding trope i get it yeah it's funny uh, ha, ha. so is the whole story of this set just meant to be told as everybody's at a party in the castle and that's it I don't know. That's, that's way cooler than than what it actually is. Oh, what is it actually? A bunch of vampires like just smashing and drinking blood in a castle. Well, that, Fucking sounds like a good ass time. Based on the art, that's what's happening. I'm okay with that. Like what it is is old creepy fucking grandpa Edgar Markov marrying like super hot Olivia. What the fuck's her name? I mean, it's like, and she's the one who's like in charge of the whole thing, right? Like this is her idea. Sure. I think well because there's a card there's a there's a card where she's like cutting her wrist and feeding the blood to Edgar, bringing him back to life, like in Underworld, and uh, yeah. So I always assumed that Edgar was dead somehow, and I yeah. don't know, maybe Nahiri killed him. I don't know. Like I don't follow the damn story. I, uh, I remember. We're gonna get to that in a minute. For right now, we have Anya, Anya Angie, Maid of Dishonor, the four five for red, black, two vampire. <laughs> Whenever it and or one or more other vampires enter the battlefield under your control, you create one of those shitty blood tokens Two sack another creature or blood token. Each opponent loses two life. You gain two life. Only once each turn do you make a vampire or oh. do you make a blood token when, when a vampire eats a beast? Oh, yeah. Oy. Yeah, because... Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, they they know how to how to cap the power level, right? Because yeah. they're just like, Ugh. yeah, they just slam the brakes on that right now. Slam the brakes on it with the first one, but the second one doesn't have that. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna preface. I'm All gonna right. preface again. I'm gonna preface. Okay. I like that this is a bunch of just like hoity toity, big big fucking collared vampires from neo gothic era, mm -hmm. hanging out drinking blood. Smashing. Yeah. This is the perfect setting and completely okay in my book to run aristocrat aristocrats. <laughs> this is okay. Sure. This is this is when I think even you should say, yes, aristocrats are okay because flavor. Fine. This they've, one time. They've arist aristoceptioned us? No. They haven't? They have not sectioned. You can anything. you could make a flavor. Aristocrats deck. No, with this thing you can't. Yes, you can but because you lose... look at that second ability. 
it's an aristocrat ability, and this is an aristocrat. She's in the fucking wedding party. Wait, but how many how many of the aristocrat pieces are vampires? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter it, because if you make infinite mana, you can sacrifice like a reassembling skeleton or something over and over and over again to that second ability, and that's how you win. Wait, so you mean if you go infinite, you can win with a single card? Yes. Oh, wow, because there's no <laughs> other cards that do that. Like, no. what the fuck? This, this based on that first, based on the first power cap thing, I think is a little bit weak. It does a little bit feel like the first Anya because, like... It, I, I'd maybe, rather play the first on you. Let's just all be honest about that. You'd rather play the first on you. Yeah, I'm kind of stalling on this one because I think it's better than people give it credit for. Because you can go infinite with it. And, it. and I don't want to get to the next one because it's actively bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Should we just go to let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go to Dorothy Vengeful Victim, the 4-4 spirit with flying for blue-white. Hey, sounds well, pretty good so sounds far. Sounds freaking amazing. When it attacks or blocks, sack it at end of combat. Ooh. Oh, okay. Well. I take back everything I said. Then it has Disturb for White Blue One. Disturb is kind of like flashback for creatures where you can play it on its backside from the graveyard, and then when it dies that time or goes to the graveyard that time, you remove it from the game. Yes. And it flips over and turns into an aura called Dorothea's Retribution, which is an enchant creature that has whenever this creature attacks, create a 4-4 white spirit creature token with flying that's tapped and attacking, and then you sacrifice the token at the end of combat. So it turns your dude into a geist of St. Traft, essentially. Yeah, I you know, you could, you could fabricate scenarios where this is the leader of a deck, and I think, I think all scenarios are just like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's white, blue, like there's auras, there's flyers. And when you do that, everybody's going to look at it and say, why aren't you playing Geist of St. Traft? And you're going to say, well, this is a, I have a spirit theme, and that's going to be fine. But just know that Geist of St. Traft is probably a better commander for that deck. And I think he is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And also there's a better spirit commander later on. Stay tuned. Yes. And there's going to be a bunch more better spirit commanders too when we get to Crappy Gawa 2. Yes. I'm going to... I'm gonna Furry machine guns and katanas yeah, dynasty. Yeah, baby. I'm all, okay, now let's, let's talk about our first strict downgrade of a character. Motherfuck. Well, are you complaining though? Yes. Really? Yes. You want something... Okay, we're talking about Edgar Charmed Grandpa. This is 4-4 yeah. four, four Vampire Noble, Noble Tribal, yeah. Black, White, 2, other vampires you control get plus 1, plus 1. Sure. We're doing good. 4-4 four, for four, 4 with a relevant ability. When he dies, return him to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. Legendary artifact, Edgar Markov's Coffin. Okay, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one White and Black Vampire Creature Token with Lifelink. And put a bloodline counter on Edgar Markov's coffin. Then, if there are three or more bloodline counters, remove those counters and transform it. Back to Edgar, old dirty grandpa. You hate Eminence. Yep. And they're, of course, not going to reprint Eminence or anything on that power level into a standard level set that is, like, fucking shitty. Correct. Are you complaining that we're getting something not as powerful after after what I said before about being okay with lower powered stuff? I just don't know why he's not a planeswalker. He's been a planeswalker for a decade. Why no. isn't he a planeswalker again? No, that's that's Soren. That's his kid. Oh, so his son is just way better than him? Yes, well that is your goal as the parent is to make your your offspring have more than you, achieve more than you did. Oh. Yes. I so, know. I stand by what I said. This guy sucks. <laughs> he does suck. I think he's balanced for not, not commander, which is like, eh. But well, we already no? we already have an Edgar. I think that this is good in standard. I don't play standard, but I imagine it being good because he can't die. How slow can standard be? Where it's just like, now he's an artifact, and you got to wait three turns for him to come back. You got to wait for like turn three or four to play him, and then he. He eats shit, and then he's gone for three turns. Nah, fuck standard. You know right, what? I this... think that this goes in Edgar Markov 1.0 dot deck, and this is four drop top of the curve vampire that you drop because he is a vampire. He gives you another vampire, and he buffs your vampires. I think that this is a good card in old school Edgar, plus it can't die. Agreed. And the backside should say once every single upkeep, not just on your upkeep. And for the record, he can definitely die because artifact removal is 
all over the place. Oh yeah, the backside can die. Yeah, just yeah, kill yeah. the coffin and he's he's toast. Or if you're playing him in commander, does you that can does remove that him from the does game. that check? Kill the coffin and the vampire dies. Yeah, is that how yeah, it works? Yeah, that's like the first step towards killing a vampire in Dracula. They I thought it was wooden stake. Well, that works too. I but thought it, it was drinking dead people blood. That doesn't kill them. I think I've crossed IPs. Yeah, I think you have too. Yeah. See, in 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 Dracula slash the lore, if you like sanctify their coffins, they have to sleep on their home soil or whatever. That's where the coffins are full of dirt, oh. and that's the only way that they can like regenerate and have somewhere to rest. Otherwise, they're just all wimpy and fucked up and hanging out in a corner looking all gross and shit. What about sunlight? That all well, that doesn't. I don't think it actually does it. What? That's the new thing, because I think that in the book, Dracula's out during the day, because he's like just out walking around town, and Mina and Jonathan see him. Does he have a fucking umbrella like Michael Jackson? No, he's got a stupid mustache. Oh, yeah, like Superman, except without glasses? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny before they even knew about it. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Moving along to, lots to talk about this one. This is Renfield, if you're following along on the Dracula sle- the sleeve. Skin cards. Dracula this skin. Is, this is this <laughs> creepy. Is, yeah, this is our Renfield. It's a Ruth tormented prophet. Let me give this one a read. This Do is a, another in the long line of three drop is it commanders that fuck. Yeah. Your old baby. Two, four, human wizard, red, blue, one. If you would draw a card, exile the top two cards of your library. Instead, you may play those cards this turn. First thing of note. That is a replacement effect. You don't draw the cards. Right. So if you've got like a psychosis crawler, which d- damages you every time I draw, yeah. that don't work no more. Right. Shut that off. Yeah. So just bear in mind. Also, brainstorm. Draw six. <laughs> put one back. <laughs> Ooh, pretty good. Two back. Oh, two back. Yeah. Don't you have, do you have to have the two to put back? No. Okay. That's important. Oh, because uh, you don't have to have the two to put back, but... Uh, uh, draw six, put two back. Pretty good. Yeah, it's not too bad. You can only play. You can only play them that this turn, turn right? Yeah. Exile those two cards of your library instead. You may play those cards th- or this turn. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Like brainstorm might be too good. It's 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 so good that you don't get maximum value off it because you can't cast six cards. Yeah. Oh fuck that! You can't. Oh, you just in, play eggs and rituals and shit. Yeah. If it's an is it deck, you definitely can. This is another. I'm gonna. I'm, this is my new thing. Where there's the Boros attacky attacky commander. This is another. Is it play a bunch of fucking yeah, shit every turn? We just commander. saw the Tefri one right from last set. That instant and sorceries cost less equal to the number of spells you cast this turn, whatever it was. Yeah, it's it's just and, an, it's and another, Goblin Electromancer is the same one, but not legendary. Yep. And Mizix of the Is Magnus is another one based on experience counters. And Elsha of the Infinite lets you cast from the top of your library. And includes white, but you don't fucking play white in Elsher decks except for like Tefri's Protection and Swords and Path. Yeah. <laughs> and, so it's, uh, an, it's what's another, is it, it's what that's your jam? Here's, Joyra, here's Weatherlight another one. Captain, right? Yeah. yeah. Here's, here's another one. If you like Is It, here's another one. If you're building another Is It deck that plays a bazillion instants and sorceries every turn, here is another one. Yep. They're sweet. Yep. Let's move on to Giralf Visionary Stitcher. Yeah, I like this guy. This guy, this guy's he's a funny guy. This is a funny guy. This is a 1-4 human wizard for blue 2. Zombies you control have flying. So I just imagine he hooks him up all in... in like, like a balloon. That's what I have pictured. He, he like has a balloon and he staples him to the, the zombie's back and just like lets them go fly and the zombie floats Oh no, away. I, I, got, I got something. I got something. Electricians are going to know what I'm talking about. He hooks them all up in parallel and then he just flies a kite up into the air and when the kite gets zapped, they all get enough voltage just to fucking fly. <laughs> they just float now. <laughs> okay. Blue. Tap. Sacrifice another non-token creature. Create an XX blue zombie creature token where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. Neat. I think that that's good. Doesn't that do the same thing as the last Geralf? Kind of? Maybe. He sacked creatures to get guys, didn't he? I think so. Uh, maybe. I think that he did. Joe will have it on the screen, and there's a lot of people listening that are smarter than us. Yeah. But Props for given flying and, and putting two different stories in both of our heads. Let us know in the comments what you thought of yeah. when you heard they all get flying. Are they flying around in hot air balloons? Who knows these yeah. things? Well, let me ask you this. Why is Gisa dead? 
because she was clearly alive in the set previous to this, and she was mm-hmm. looking super good, and now she's just dead on this Ralph card, and he's trying to bring her back to life? Well, maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe that's not her. Maybe that's just somebody else who looks like every other fucking goth chick from Innistrad. I guess so. Yeah. Guess. Both are pro- plausible things. Let's just move on to the next card. Right? I was going to say props are one thing. Uh, m- negative props? Anti-props? Minus props. Minus props yeah. for doing the same thing as the last Jarolf. Yeah. Let's talk, Ryan. Oh, baby. About the Frogmander himself. Grolnok, the omnivore. Grolnok. Sounds like an orc from the Lord of the Rings novels. Yes. Yes. Grishnok and Grolnok are friends. They're very close in, in pronunciation as well. Yes. Give him a read. 3-3, three, three, blue, green, 2 for a frog. Whenever a frog you control attacks, mill three cards. Whenever a permanent card is put into your graveyard from your library, exile it with a croak counter on it. <laughs> what the fuck? A, a croak counter. And you may play lands and cast spells from among cards you own in exile with croak counters on them. So essentially it says Grawl knock or Frog Attacks, draw three cards, hypothetically speaking. That's pretty good. Because I'm definitely playing this with zero non-permanence in it. Ooh, and then it can double up as a Primal Surge deck. Yeah, baby. For reference, because anybody who's listening is like, what the fuck? 23. 23 frogs in Simic. We're almost there. I think we're there. We're almost there. Hey, if... If you can play, if you can play Crab Tribal, Skeleton Tribal, uh, what's another one? What's another shitty one like that? Scarecrows. Scarecrow Tribal. <laughs> don't d- don't miss out on CCO's top five and five in coming weeks. <laughs> you can definitely play Frog Tribal, and half of them are from like 2001 to 2003 that used to be beasts <laughs> that are now frogs because clearly they are frogs but that creature type just didn't exist oh girl knock is a frog included in this so 22 yes. 22 do any of the frogs give bonuses to other frogs i don't think there's... they don't that's why i don't think frog tribal might be there yet because like guy is anthem you're just playing a bunch <laughs> of shitty creatures because most of the frogs aren't very good there's like spore frog is good chub toad and, and chub toad is amazing just Hey, Chub Toad, Chub Toad started it all, man. Chub Toad is Chub Setter, or Trend Toad, if you will. Yes, I will. He started the trend of frogs with arms hanging out of their mouth. Yeah. And, or generally, creatures with arms hanging out of their mouth tribal. Yeah. Chub Toad. Chub Toad is the Origi- originator of that. Originally from Ice Age. Yeah, Grol, what's his name? Grol Knock? Grol Knock. Grol Knock, happy to see. You know what? Maybe maybe if Commander Cookout ever starts doing like video gameplay, it's all the it's all the rage. All oh, kids are talking about it. All the kids they? are doing it now, yeah. Yeah, maybe it'll have to be like Frog Tribal versus Crab Tribal versus other should have been errated to Noble Tribal. <laughs> and I don't know, what's another tribe that we talk about lots? Goblins. <laughs> uh, goblins and <laughs> goblins would probably win that game, hey? Uh goblins, but they have to have original white borders <laughs> tribal. So it's like Goblin Hero from Starter, which was a rare um seventh edition Raging Goblin, Mons Goblin Raiders, Goblin Weather Balloon, or Goblin Balloon Brigade. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Maybe, maybe Goblin Weather work. Balloon? What the fuck is that? Yeah, that might be a card. That's it might probably an uncard. It could come out. But the point is Grolnock is cool. I think that he's gonna be a He's going to helm some neat decks where you would want to mill some self mill decks in Simic. And it's some Simic, like, sort of just moving away from draw cards, play more land. Yes. Like, yes, you're technically drawing a bunch of cards. Yes, you can use those cards to play land, but at least it doesn't say draw a card and play a land on it. So, points for that. And it's a frog. That's cool. All good things. Yes. One last thing. Uh-oh. From an artistic standpoint. You can see the dude inside his, like, bioluminescent belly. Yes. <laughs> I like that a lot. Okay. This frog doesn't take any shit. I guarantee you that. Unless it's a shit with a human half-digested in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those kind of shits Then he, then he does take one no. shit. Yeah. Speaking of shits, let's talk about some actual shits in Helena and Elena partners. Don't we already have Helena and Elena? Yes. Helena and Elena? Yeah. We already have those that actually have partners. Are yes. they Are they trolling us? Yes. Are they memeing us? Yes, this is them trying to be funny. It's like, ah, look, it's two shitty commanders. I'm a shitty commander, and we're going to call them partners. Eh, these guys suck. Mad props, though, for trolling us. I guess. In in not an unset way. I don't like when they troll us in the rare slot. 
Yeah, that's why I don't want to buy boosters. Yeah, because somebody's going to buy a pack and they're going to get a Helena and Elena partners in there. And the, the, you might as well have just given yourself a paper cut with the money and flushed it down the toilet. You can't give yourself paper cuts with Canadian money. It's made out of plastic now. Well, yeah, but down in the land of the free and the rest of like the earth, there's still lots of paper money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's give them a read. The Helena and Elena Partners, Human Ranger, 2-3, Green, Red, 2, First Strike and Reach. One's got a sword, one's got a bow. Sure. Ch- checks out. Because the sword definitely helps with both First Strike and Reach. It checks out. People people know. <laughs> At the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control where X is Helena and Elena's power. That creature gains haste until end of turn. I think that you're stuck on just like, oh, I think it's boring, so I'm not willing to hear anything about it. Well, it's, it's, bo- that's, it's boring. That's what it does. It's I, th- I think that... This doesn't even go in Abzan where you play all these counter decks i think that you're not giving it enough credit because i think that it, it could be good it could be good i think that at the beginning of combat on your turn is a triggered ability yep. so you go into trigger and xenagos you, you pump it up with a pump spell giant mm-hmm. growth let's say sure. five you xenagos it and then it's got whatever right it's 10 all of a sudden you flash or sneak attack something and you give that thing right or, or you just cast whatever, you have something else in play. Yeah. You don't need to flash it in. You play something, and then you just, like, make Helena and Elena, like, 10 power, and then another guy gets 10 power, and you hit him for 20. I think that that's good. Or you could use that Xenagos to make Helena 20 power and win the game. Just kill somebody with it. That would also be and good. And the superfluous addition of the plus one, plus one counter doesn't mean shit. But it does, because then you've got a 20-20, or, or something else that's equally arbitrarily big or you could just play something else that's big and just xenagos it and beat them for 20 anyway and you're not wasting your command zone on this crap no i think it's good i don't think, I it's, don't think it's a waste of a command zone slot i think it is we'll have to see I, I guarantee somebody will build this deck and you will you will like it i, I don't know i just I think, think that you will i think there's more exciting grow commanders and this could go in the decks it's not a bad card it's just a bad commander in my estimation i think it's better as a commander than in the 99 you think i think so yeah. i think so because you have access to like essentially what it does once it's on the battlefield is it doubles your pump spells because it, it doubles them but it splits them across two things it doesn't double mm. them on one thing it splits them across two things which i think is beneficial from a dodge removal standpoint yeah. and uh Deals commander damage to one person, kills another person from 40 strategy. Yeah, we, I think it's good. We'll have to see. We'll have yeah. to see. Somebody submit some list. If you're a patron, put it in the preferred deck list channel. We'll see it there before anywhere else. Yeah. And they'll all be different from each other, and it's going to be really exciting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. That... Oh, that was sarcasm. Yes. Got it. All right. Time will tell with that one. Let's, let's continue on our journey through Innistrad and talk about Henrika Domnathy. What the fuck? Yeah, it's a it's a one I'm, one three for black black two flying at the beginning of combat on your turn. Choose one that hasn't been chosen yet. Each player sacks a creature. You draw a card, lose a life, or transform it into Henrika Infernal Seer, which is flying death touch life link three four, and then it has black black one fire breathe your team if your team consists of creatures with flying death touch and life link, and they will. Yeah, because that's the deck that you're going to build. Flying life link death touch tribal, vampire yeah. nighthawk tribal. Yeah. I think it's cool. I think it goes in Vampire Tribal because lots of them have flying. Yep, and, and Death Touch and Life Link. Yes, you're right, actually. Yeah. I would I would caution one before activating that ability. Make sure you have three creatures so you get maximum efficiency on your, uh, <laughs> yeah. your fire breathing. You got to get fire breathing rate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it and or uh, each creature? Oh, so she counts herself. Yeah. Funny thing. Henrika Dom, Domnathy? I never read that out loud, and I never heard anybody say it before. And then and I you, said it. When you said it, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fine. I, I like that you can just choose to transform it and fire breathe your whole team if it's like late game. Yeah. Which it, is cool. Is it super exciting? Maybe not. But it's cool. It's a good card. We've already established yeah. that being not super exciting, game, game breaking, format warping, changing is good that's fine at least yeah. fine yeah yeah i mean you can build a neat little deck around that you'll have a cool little black aggro deck you're mono swinging. black you're aggro I gaining like some it. life that's that's put neat. your put your moral fins and your gallo braids in they got oh no they got trample yeah no one's got flying i don't remember which one one of them does fuck yeah keep going jacob haukon inspector not as funny 
But I like the mana cost. We've seen a couple cheapies, eh? Yeah. This guy is gr uh, no blue one human advisor. Fucking advisor. You're there. I'm there. You're I'm, on it. I'm sold. You love this card. I'm sold. He's my he's my new commander. Okay. He's a zero two. Tap to draw a card, then exile a card from your hand face down. You may look at the card as long as it remains exiled. Okay, sure. As long as he doesn't leave play and then enters the battlefield as a new object, I think. Sure. Sure. Also, you may pay blue, blue, four as part of the same ability if you do transform him. So you can't just go blue, blue, four and transform him. You have to draw a card, then exile a card, and pay four. Yes. Right? So you have to do that all at once, and he transforms into Hawkins Insight, Jim Hawkins, uh, a.k.a. the guy from um, James Pleadies Hawkins from Treasure Planet. Sure. Yeah, it's a good-ass movie. All right. Yeah, we're going to get comments about that because people love that movie. Okay. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile up, uh, exile the top card of your library face down. You may look at it and blah, 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 as long as it remains exiled. Once during each of your turns, you may play a land card or cast a spell from among the cards exiled with permanence. Fucking, uh. You can play fucking the card for free that you've exiled with it. Yeah. I trailed that off because it's like, what? Why? Yeah. Why? Why does it need to do all these things? I just want it to be an advisor. I'm never going to pay six because it's an advisor on the front that says draw a card. <laughs> it's it's fine. This is a cool card, I think. Uh, can you can you foresee any place that it is the commander? Is it a mythic because it's a two mana tap draw card? I think it's a mythic because it's a eight mana play shit for free card. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Eight yeah. mana play shit for free is like a big deal, right? Yeah. And if the first thing you play is omniscience, then you just away you go. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah, I was thinking, why is that? Why is that six mana? Why is it worded like that? Well, because they make it hard yeah. to do it, and it's eight mana in total. Yeah. And then it's like, oh yeah, now we're talking about omniscience, and you can look at the top card of your library, and you can fucking ex yeah. Okay, I get yeah. you. Yeah, there's definitely ways. I'm sure. Is there a land still that puts a uh, spell on top of your library? A land? A land or... There's a blue thing that'll put a spell from your graveyard on top of your library, and that just immediately gives you infinite turns, and away you go. Well, there's Mystic Sanctuary that gets you a land back, but it's an ETB thing. It just happens once. Yeah, I was I read something either today or then. I was like, ooh, this was really good with... I think it might even be from this set. Can't you just go like... Can't you just go like uh, Archaeomancer and like Erratic Portal or Crystal Shard, and you bounce your guy each turn and replay him? Yeah, if you've got enough mana to do that. Oh, sure. but that just gets you an extra turn card back from your graveyard to your hand, so you yeah. don't even need this fucking shitty guy. Yeah. You don't even need Jacob. Yeah, fuck Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Man, vampires and werewolves. Who needs Jacob? Oh, oh! Oh, I didn't get it until now. Did it. Oh! Did it. Oh! Man, you remember when we were doing, remember Open Flippies and you got Twilight Panther and you had to drink your whole drink? Yeah. God damn it, I had to drink my whole drink. <laughs> oh. Catilda Dawnheart Martyr is our next card. It's another Disturb one. Oh, okay, Enchant Creature. I'm looking at the back of it already. Catilda, it it's a white, white one for a star, star, spirit, warlock, flying lifelink, pro vampires. Power and toughness are each equal to the number of permanents you control that are spirits and or enchantments. Hey, spirit tribal and or enchantment tribal? Yeah, and then it disturbs for white, white three, and then it attaches to a creature that has all of those abilities. Flying lifelink protection from vampires plus X plus X where X is spirits and enchantments. I think that this is cool. It buffs itself. Because it is a spirit on the front side, and it buffs itself because it is an enchantment on the back side. Mm -hmm. I think this could be your enchantment finisher if if your enchantress decks, because they always fucking need a way to win, because they never have ways to win except approach of the second son. <laughs> this is a way that is interesting and n not as foreseeable and yeah. more original. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's cool. I like that one. Play this instead of approach. Boom. And then give your enchantments and your enchanted creature shroud, and then you're fucking golden. What's the, what's the one that, like, enchanted creatures get shroud? Privileged position or enchanted creature has shroud, whatever it is, and then your enchantments have shroud too? You just fucking lock lock it out. You can't target nothing. Privileged position definitely does that, unless they, they target the privileged position, but that's not what's going to happen. Well, no, when you give your enchantments shroud, there's an enchantment that does that. Uh, okay. Uh, it's from it's from Shadowmoor, I think. Just play Dovescape. I don't... 
it's probably not the same thing. But Definitely not, but just play Dovescape. Then they can't play fucking shit to kill your thing. Let's make your creature unblockable and win. Boom. Dovescape's so good. All right, let's talk about Millicent Restless Revenant. I actually like Millicent Restless Revenant. Yeah. MRR. Yeah. Doesn't roll off the tongue as good. <laughs> Get this. 4-4 four, four Spirit Soldier. So we're seeing Spirit again. Blue, white, five. Yeah, you know this one's going to be good because it costs fucking seven. Uh-uh. It costs two because it costs one less to cast for each Spirit you control. <laughs> yeah, well, now we're talking. Spirit, at least kind of tribal. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Flying, as Spirits want to do. When it or... Another non-token spirit you control dies, it or deals combat damage to a player. Mm-hmm. What? Mm-hmm. Create a one-one white spirit creature token with flying. So you just beat ass, and then you beat more ass next turn for beating ass. That's right. And you're playing the color that's got all the anthems in white. Yeah. And all the like blue. <laughs> yeah, and it has blue also. <laughs> it's got blue also. Yes. This is a good card. I like this one. This I like this one's lot. Good. You get a four-four for. I don't know. Even if you get it for four, that's fine. That yeah. means you've got three spirits, which which turn three, you go spectral procession, gives you three spirits. Yeah. Turn four, you cast this guy. And then whenever it or another, oh, non-token, there you got me. Spectral procession makes tokens, makes yeah. the tokes. So you got to play token, you got to play non-token spirits, but oh, there are some that are there's good. There's plenty at, at one CMC, two CMC, and three CMC. There's Catilda Dawnheart Martyr at three. Boom. There you go. There. And then that one's going to make itself bigger when it hits things. I think Millicent is going to fuck. I think it's a cool card. I like it. Yes. I I do wish that they'd stop calling them spirits and call them what they really are, which is ghosts. Yes. Because I want to play ghost tribal. I'd I'd probably build this if it was ghosts. And they just matter at everything like they just did with Phyrexians and frogs. (laughs) That's right. Yes. If if they errat it to say ghost, I will have a Millicent deck. The next day. Oh, man. They would never do that, though. No. That's why I feel totally secure in saying that. Yes. Yes. Secure in your millicent, your millis... I can't even, I can't even make the words fit. Let's go on to a shitty card, Ryan. Let's talk about Audric the Butt Cursed. Oh, man. Don't let the Commander's Brew guys, don't let them hear it. (laughs) Don't let them hear it. Okay. Making somebody into a huge gag that's super hilarious is one thing. Having that super hilarious gag be a really good card, that's a different thing. See Brash Taunter. <laughs> <laughs> but but Brash Taunter is the most handsomest, most versatile, most powerful creature ever printed. Is Audric Butt Cursed the most handsome, most versatile, most powerful creature ever printed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't at me, Sean and Andy. Okay. 3-3 okay. three, three, Vampire. Yeah, he's he's dead. not a human no more. He's, no, he's, he's dead. He's dead now. They got him. They got him. He's going to the Vampire Bang Fest. <laughs> I guess so. White... Red one vampire soldier. When he enters the battlefield, create X blood tokens where X is the number of abilities from among flying, first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hex proof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, vigilance found among creatures you control. No skulk on there, eh? No. No skulk. So Audric mm-hmm. 2.0 getting no love. Or no. 1.0. No, 2.0. No love for the skulk, eh? Yeah, so that's what that card does, and we're going to move on. You get a bunch of blood tokens for having different abilities. Yeah, we're going to talk about old rust stain now. Just (laughs) just wait. For anybody who's interested, you swap your everything tribal Edgar, or everything tribal Audric, out of the command zone. Mm -hmm. You put new Audric into the command zone, and now you have red. Which is better, but now your commander is worse. You think? Well, doesn't the other Audric give all of your creatures all those other abilities? Mm. Whereas this one just gives you a shitty blood counter? Or as we say here at the nation, a butt counter? Which is funny. That's arguably hilarious. But no. 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 I want butt tokens with, you know how on SpongeBob when they bend over and it shows like their butt cheeks like puff out? Yeah. Yeah. One butt counter is that. Two butt counters is like a, a butt cheek that has like three cheeks <laughs> and then four <laughs> cheeks and then five cheeks. That's what I want. Moving on to old, old Rust Stain. Old Rust Stain is a 1-4 for green, black, one. When it comes into play or at the beginning of your upkeep, you mill a card. We're liking this one so far, this right? This is good. 
If a land is milled, you get a treasure. Still pretty good. If a creature card is milled this way, you get a 1-1 one, one green insect creature. Pretty, I'm not, yeah, I'm pretty not, good. not complaining. If a non-creature, non-land card is milled this way, you get a... We get a treasure. You get a fucking butt token. Oh, Damn come it. on. Treasure. Treasure. Uh, oh, we were so close. I want butt treasure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want those beads. Well, I mean, another word for butt treasure is shit. <laughs> and you are getting a shitty counter, so... There we oh, go. Oh, man. We could blink this guy. We could sack and replay him. This is the kind of guy where, like anything, if you make infinite mana and have a sack outlet, yeah. you can just play him over and over and over and over again. And then you can draw your card and cycle with your blood counters through your whole deck because you still have infinite mana. You could do that with this guy. Well, you'd cycle through your whole deck with just him and the infinite mana. You don't even need the butt counters. Do you draw a card for one of them? No, he just mills them all. But since you're playing oh, gold yeah, you guard, could, you don't yeah, you could mill shit. and then just get shit back from your graveyard. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah, that would be that would that would work. That would work. That that'll do, pig. That'll do. So that's that'll another one of those guys. Old rust stain. <laughs> <laughs> He's there. Let's go on to uh, people that one that people are super hard about. But people are pretty hard for Olivia, Crimson Bride. Maybe not the card, but the creature for the or the character for the sure. The character, yeah, yeah, people yeah. People love their Olivias. And you know what? People love, uh, 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 before we get to it, uh -oh. I do love kind of that upward angle that they shoot angels in and with like a brightly colored sky behind it. This is kind of that. I do appreciate kind of the perspective of this art and when you get the full art ones or if I did a borderless extension on them every Thursday on our Facebook page, this would be a very nice one to do. You know what this kind of looks like to me is the Driz Dorden thing where he's jumping and oh, yeah. there's things. But I mean, you know, she's flying, so it, it yeah. makes more sense. Yeah, it's but a common fantasy pose, I guess. It, I guess. it just kind of looks like that and she's sort of far away and stuff. But I like the art and I like this card. This is a cool card. Okay, I like this one. Give it a read. I do like this one too. Olivia Crimson Bride is a 3 4 flying hasting goblin noble for red, black, Four? Va Vampire Noble. Va what did I say? Goblin. Goblin. <laughs> You're thinking of Muxo Man uh, Grandy Savage. Oh, I was. The, it's oh, so close to my heart and mana cost. Anyway. <laughs> it's very close. <laughs> Whenever it attacks, return target creature card from your graveyard to play tapped and attacking. It gains when you don't control a legendary vampire. Exile this creature. Just a legendary vampire. Yeah. So we just play a bunch of those. Check. Yeah. That's easy. Because like they're, I think most of them are good. Most of them are pretty good, and yeah. And you just play the wedding party. Yeah. Which is what we're going to call it now. There's a bunch of them, yeah. Could we just, can we, can we collectively as a community change it from, oh, I'm playing aristocrats to I'm playing wedding party? Can we do that? Absolutely we can. Um, it's like wedding party tribal. And then everybody knows that it's like Rakdos, vampires, sacrifice your shit and drain you. Yeah. Okay. We can, we can definitely okay. do that. We should make that happen. Yeah. And you just, you just gain control of other people's shit. No, it's yours. It has to be your graveyard. Oh, yeah. I'm okay with that, though. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'll this just, is cool. You can fill your deck up with... Legendary vampires. You just yeah. get those back so you never lose control of them. Or just giant beaters. Yes, also that. Oh, yeah. Also giant that. beaters. Also I'm, that. Do you do self-mill and then you put like the stuff with power and toughness equal to your graveyard? Yes. Then, fuck yeah, you, you do. Yeah, you do. This is a cool one. I mean, this again, is it groundbreaking? Not really. Is it really, really cool? Fuck yeah, it is. You know what I've noticed? We've seen a bunch, and we're going to see a couple more, that say whenever so-and-so attacks, is this something, is this a, a new type of thing? Like, I know that, that those words in that order aren't new, but having them in this concentration among 20 legends seems like there's a lot of they want us to attack, and attacking in Commander historically or at least in the sh short term, hasn't been the de facto way to win as you get more tuned and powerful. I think that Is it's... Is this them edging us back? You stop that. Oh, <laughs> stop <laughs> I that. I didn't mean it like that this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the on attack trigger is a way of keeping a, po a commander's power level in check because you got to work really hard to have them attack more than once. Yeah. And, I mean, having it do that, like, let's say she did that when she came into play. What's the first thing we're going to do? Sacrifice her, get her back, bounce her, play her again, infinite mana, infinite times, all Pers that jazz. Exactly. Like old Rustane. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the first thing everybody thinks about doing. Or when or when she dies, you do that. Then you just make infinite mana, sack it over and over again. Whereas you know what? Did attacking, that make it, it like has that, the valve, it turns the power level down just a little bit. Yes. To make it like you're you're risking something by attacking with her get this her benefit. Is, this is how we get games like we had last night at EDH&M where it's like people had to attack to win 
and I was stopping them from attacking because I would draw cards and then I would mill them. Yeah. It makes games more interesting. If player two and three were just like, or three and four in this case, were like, oh yeah, I'll just fucking sack all my guys, make two mana each, uh, and I got 87 mana, whatever. Yeah. Right? Or or I'll just play this thing and I'll just play this infinite times, right? Yeah. Makes old Rust Stain compared to Olivia feel a lot like old Stick Fingers, a lot like Gitrog. Not that he's an ETB thing, but he's a combo guy. Yeah. Right? So, I, I like Olivia, I, I, yeah, I like it. Here's another one that I'm kind of digging. Oh, fuck, I'm reading this I'm one. I'm kind of digging on Runo Stromkirk. Stromkirk. Yes. Stromkirk. Yes, I want a Stromkirk. I want a Runo. This is a 1-4 vampire cleric this time in blue, black, white. Blue, black, one. What? Blue, black, one vampire flying. When he enters the battlefield, put up to one creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Now, why do you want to do that, Ryan? Well, you could combo with that. You could. But at the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal that card. If it's a creature card with converted mana cost six or greater, reveal that card and transform it. Oh, baby. And you transform it into Krothus, Lord of your mother's deep ass. <laughs> yeah, I love it. He's a 3-5 flyer, Kraken Horror. When it attacks, there it is again, yep. create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of another target attacking creature. Okay? If that creature is a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, or Serpent, create two of those motherfuckers. Yeah, instead. baby. That's awesome. Yes. Yes. So the Sea Monster deck exists. Yep. And I think the last maybe half a dozen times I've ran into it, it's been not mono blue. It's been like yep. a Rixmathese or generally simic with just like a throwaway simic value commander yeah agreed agreed does black make that deck better or worse different different okay different. this is okay yeah and that's it's, why it's, i like it's this. not a shift up or down it's a lateral shift yep it's like changing positions inside your company but getting the same salary yeah a lateral shift yeah you're just looking at a different window and I, like, I, I like that. I, I'm a fan of this card just because that's what it does. You it, should lateral shift from the east side of the building to the west side. Way better view. Well, I work on both sides. Oh. I do. Yeah, when, I'm, do. Work, when I'm doing the, the Gormley show, I'm over there. Yeah. And when I'm doing my other job, I'm over here. So I get to see out both windows. Oh. So you like Simic and Demir. That's right. Oh. Yeah, I'm like. That's dirty. No whatever. king shaming in the nation. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I very much like this guy. I think he's cool. Are you going to build him? Would you build them? You if want to I do was, Sea Monster Tribal? If I was doing Sea Monster Tribal and it's not going to be Tromocratus or a Rixmithies, I would build this guy. And I've already built a Rixmithies and that was straight value. So I want to build this guy. Neat. Neat. All right, Ryan. It's on to another stinker, I think. Ugh. Another stinker, I'm thinking. Although it is another red and black legendary vampire. Hey. So it goes with Olivia in Strephon Morier Progenitor. There's no I in there, so I think it's Morer. And there's also an R in it, so I think there might be a typo. <laughs> Morer. Strephon? Is, is that is that supposed to sound like Eastern European? What is that? I don't know. Shouldn't it be Stefan or Stefan? Whatever. He, he flies, he's a 3-2. At the beginning of your end step, you get a butt counter for each player that lost life this turn. You build the deck so you get four of those every turn. And then whenever Strephon attacks, you can sack two butt counters. If you do, you can put a vampire from your hand into play, tapped and attacking. It's indestructible until end of turn. Those are all good things to do. It's cool, but it's in a set where there's a bunch of other commanders that do the same thing. Like they command the same deck, mm -hmm. just better than he does. Yeah. And if you want to do the everybody lose life thing, we got two other commanders that do that better too in, I can't remember the one's name right now, but Joel probably put it on, and Rakdos, Lord of Riots. What's the other one? There's another what one. What does it do? Same thing. Not the same thing. What the hell does it do? It's the other, what the hell does it do? But there is another one that you play, the, like, it's the exact same deck as Rakdos. Is it like Caravec the Merciless? mm, -mm. Well, he do, he kind of does that. Yeah, it's new, though. It's a newer card. People know what it is, and eventually I'm going to figure out what it is. There's two people at our local playgroup that play <laughs> this deck. I just can't think of the damn card right now. Not Prosper. He wants you to cast stuff from not your hand. Yeah, that's not him. And he's Rakdos? 
Mm-hmm. Is he is he the other Rakdos that cares about killing non demons and devils? Mm-mm. No, no. I'll have it for you next time. Sure, you like know the what? Next show you I'll you know it. what pisses me off a little bit is Streffen's like the leader of the precon. It's like uh, uh. you know who should have been the leader of the precon, Olivia. Yeah, and she should have also been in the set. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, I'll just switch him. Oh no, but it's Crimson Vow. She's the bride. She has to be in the main set. Just do both. Fuck them. Do yeah, both. do both. Next up, we have a reprint in Thalia, Guardian of Thraban. I, it's like the 25th art for her. People are super, like, you get the, they're, they're fucking South Thalia simps. So they're just like, oh, yeah, fucking Thalia. Yeah, Thalia, 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 Thalia. The, I don't own one of these, this, of this card, and I want one, and now I'm going to get one. And I really like the Mina Harker skin. That they gave her. I, oh, yeah. I really, really like that piece of artwork. So cool. I'm, I'm very excited to get my hands on all of that. All right. I Always think, important to find a positive. Yep, I think that's the card I'm actually probably the most excited to like own. Cool. I don't even know if I'm going to play it. I just want one. And Thalia's fine. She's good. Yeah. And I do like this piece of art. Uh, it includes some kind of neo-Gothic architecture that I'm a fan of. There's a bunch of zombies. Oh, uh, well, yeah, there is. Yeah, in the window there. Cool. Yeah. Moving on. Moving along. We have... Torrin's Fister of Angels. Ooh. That's it's Fist of the Angels, but he's a 2-2 two, two for White Green 1 Training. We haven't talked about training yet. No, but here we go. We're going to give it a read. Training is whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature. So when he attacks with somebody bigger than him, he gets bigger. So when he attacks with an angel. Right. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you get a 1-1 one, one green and white human creature soldier with training. That's actually good. That's cool. Because you're always going to cast creatures that are always going to be bigger than him because they're angels. Well, for a while anyways. Yeah, for a bit. And he's going to give you more guys that have training. So when they attack, they're mm-hmm. going to be bigger than the guy that that you just got. I think that's neat. It's the opposite of mentor, right? From yeah. Gatewatch? Yeah. I think that this guy goes in the 99. I think of so, Of a Sigarda deck, human tribal deck. What's what's the two human, like the Azorius or the Selesnya human tribal commanders we got from the last set, Midnight Hunt? Oh, we yeah. liked both of them, remember? Yep. And this guy fits right in there, or maybe could be the commander, but I think better in the 99. Agreed. Neat card. Okay. Last two. Oh, yeah. Last two best two? Bangers. Yeah, baby. Bangers. I really like this one because it has cool eye stalks. It has a scary mouth. It has a big tongue. Its ass is a brain. Toxril the Corrosive. His ass is a brain. You're right. Yeah. Toxril the Corrosive. 7-7 seven, seven Slug Horror. I'm... Soul. Say no more. Don't even read any more of the card. I don't even care what it does. Okay. Umbrus Fear Manifest. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, no. Toxrail the Corrosive Black Black 5 Slug Horror at the beginning of each end step. Each end step. Each mother ass end step. Yeah. Put a slime counter on each creature you don't control. Each? It says each twice it's, in the same sentence. It's given us an each around. Creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one for each slime counter on them. Now, I'm going to get you to stop right there for just a second. Because I don't think that each around joke got near the credit (laughs) that it deserves. That was very good. That was very good. It's supposed to be so much better because I didn't pay any attention to it. And you just fuck it. You did, it was fuck too, me. It's too good not to pay attention to it. Oh, man. It was everything I had to not make a Bukaki joke. And you ruined it. (laughs) You ruined it. (laughs) God damn it, Brando. <laughs> oh, my inner Kyla is coming out. God damn it, Brando. <laughs> okay. Each creature with a slime counter on it gets minus one, minus one for each slime counter. Yeah, baby. Whenever a creature you don't control with a slimer dies, create a one, one black slug creature token. Oh, man. Slug tribal. So the, that's got to be it. Not even close. What? Black. Blue, mind oh, you. Oh, shit. Blue. Black, blue. Sack a slug. Draw a card. Holy. Let's just say it, Ryan. Let's just say it on the record so everyone can hear it. This card should have been green. <laughs> oh, man. I was going to say Tox Reel for president. That's what I was going to say. This guy's fucking, he's a banger. I've seen him come up multiple times every day since he was previewed on 
both of my Twitter feeds and all four of the big commander Facebook groups that I'm a part of. One of those is the main CEDH group. Ooh. This guy, I think this guy slimes. I was going to say slaps, but he doesn't slap. He slimes. Yeah, he slimes. He oozes along. I like this guy lots. Even yeah. in my casual thing, I'm going to play him in like a Traxa. I'm going to play him in Shields Down Turgrid. G- I love just, this guy. G- did you, did you, we'll talk after the show. Okay. Last guy. Last guy. Now, last guy because guaranteed we're doing a Toxrill deck. Guaranteed. Yes, that's going to happen. So we're going to get into all the different things you can do with Toxrill in the next couple of weeks. Umbrus Fear Manifest. Now, before we talk about him, did you hear that sound? Just listen. That's the sound of Chris Von Doom wherever he is getting an erection. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Wow. I guarantee you he likes this card. Guaranteed. I like this card. He's not super hard on this set. He's hard for this card. I like the name. Yep. It's a cool art. It looks It's different than what I thought it was now that I've looked at it again. Yep. Nightmare Horror. Okay, let's see if that comes into play. Okay. 1-1 one, one for Black Blue 3. I'm listening. Uh-huh. I am very interested at this point. Okay. Umbrus Fear Manifest gets plus one, plus one for each card your opponents own in exile. Ooh. Ooh. So we're going we're gonna to dig into the implications of that in a minute. But before we do, whenever Umbrus or another nightmare or another horror or... enters the battlefield under your control, target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a land. So they grind to a land. You exile grind them. Yeah. And we've seen exile no sorry, we've seen mill grind before, or mill grind 4, mill grind x, right? Yeah. And we've seen guys that say power and toughness equal to number of cards in graveyards consuming aberration and white of precinct 6 and there's a bunch in green, right? Yeah. And and the what's the black lurgoif? Same thing. Uh, Necrogoyf? And and Terravore, plus one, plus one for each land yeah. in the opponent's graveyard. What we haven't seen is hit you for one. Okay, no blocks. Oh, funny chip-ins, bro. This is pretty good. Sacrifice Tormod's Crypt, exile your graveyard, give my guy plus 20, plus 20. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this says? You know what this says? It says, kill your blocker, Bajuka Bog. Kill you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what this says. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. My lord, this is a cool card. You know what this says? This is the, guaranteed. You put leyline of black in here, right? Uh, the void. Leyline mm-hmm. of the void. Yeah. Traumatize you. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking kill you. <laughs> right. That's a, mother of mother of ass. Mother of mill. This yes. Is a, this is a cool card. I like this. I like the strategy that it kind of leads into. I like just the axis at which it attacks the game. I like this card. I love that it's two colors and that you have to mill your opponent <laughs> and then you have to exile their shit. But the payoff for that extra hoop so good. is just like kill you. Yeah. Because you've got removal. You've got bounce. You've got free and or cheap and or free removal backup. You got all the stuff. You yeah. got all the tools. It's a 1-1 one, one for 5, though. We get it. Yeah. Well, it's not going to be a 1-1 one, one for 5 for very long. Because N- no. if it dies and you play it again, it's still going to be giant. It's not, like it get ca- it's, not, it's not like it counters. It gets big. If you traumatize somebody and remove their shit. It gets plus 1, plus 1 for yeah. each. Yeah. yeah. It's still a 51-51 for 7 the next time you play it. Oh, man. Really? Dang. Cool. And cool. I kind of like that you can play it with the... Because I really like the Ashiok from... Uh, Theros, the the one that makes the nightmare horror tokens. Oh yeah, that's that, cool. That's also kind of a Miller and card exiler. So hey, it, there it, it is. That's just plays kinda, right into it. It's kind of neat. I mean, that's not a, it's not a broken ass combo, but it's cool. And it you can gives play, you a reason to play a, a card that you otherwise might not. That is cool. Just because it's cool. And there's a synergy. It doesn't need to combo, and it doesn't even need to be like a a very very repeatable synergy. It can yes. just be something that's good that gives you repeated value. Yeah, it's just cool. I guess you could play the other uh, Ashiok too, the one that exiles graveyards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also, <laughs> guess, also yes. Also not too bad. <laughs> Cool. Well, that is all of the commanders that we have. At this point, there's 20 of them. Yeah, I think, I'm assuming there's going to be two or three more in the commander pre Sure. I mean, everybody who listens to us listens to a bunch of other content creators that also do reviews, and there will be plenty of 
Crimson Vow Commander deck techs to go around. Yeah. Some of those will be ours. So we hope everybody in the nation tunes back in. Yeah, we're going to talk about the rest of the set on the, the next show. So I've mentioned two or three, and you like the same two or three that I do, and they all happen to be Demir. Yeah. Uh, the one sure. glow one I didn't like. Yeah, what the fuck, hey? What world are we living in? <laughs> yeah. And the Simic one you did. <laughs> what the hell is happening? <laughs> what is it, DDO podcast? Must be. I think that that's a good summation of, yeah, maybe we'll build some in some time. Yeah, I don't hate this set. I don't hate it. I like I it's... like how we're going to see some build arounds. Yeah. I like how there's some discord as to whether or not this is good because it's not overtly powerful. Yeah. That's my final thought of the day. My final thought of the day is the same as your final thought of the day. I'm happy there's a frog. I'm happy that there's a slug. I'm happy that these cards aren't overtly terrible. I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy for that. I'm glad none of them is a fucking werewolf. Hey, I'm glad <laughs> that FusionGamingOnline.com offers promo code CCO Fusion Five to get five percent off all the cards that you're gonna buy that we talked about tonight, and the five cards that we're gonna, or the five cards, at least five cards that we're gonna talk about on the next episode of Commander <laughs> Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song.